name do you think of when the atomic bomb comes to mind? Robert Oppenheimer? Einstein? How about James Asher Shokey? James Shokey was among the youngest instrument specialists on the Manhattan Project. Nevertheless, his ingenuity enabled him to make important contributions to the development of needed nuclear radiation detection and measurement instruments. It was the start of his highly successful scientific and technical business career. Mr. James Shokey was born in Chicago, Illinois, April 29, 1924. As a young man, I became very interested in science in the fifth grade when I received a chemistry set and set it up in the basement in a small lab. James went on to Nicholas Zen High School. While there, he completed all the science and mathematics classes his school had to offer. He graduated there with extremely high marks. After that, Mr. Shokey went on to Illinois Institute of Technology and had received a deferment from the draft. During the start of his sophomore year, he was told he was going to be reclassified to 1A and soon be drafted. He enlisted in a Signal Corps Reserve Radio and Electronics program at the University of Chicago and graduated second in his class. The head professor of the program, Dr. Robert Moon, was going to be leaving the program and moving on to the Manhattan Project. He would request the transfer of 10 people from the military. One of them was Mr. Shokey. He was transferred out halfway through his basic training program. Shokey was assigned to work under Wendell Bradley, a highly experienced electronic physicist in the laboratory instrument group at the Metallurgical Laboratory located in the Ryerson Physics Building on the University of Chicago campus. The University of Chicago was one of many Manhattan Project sites around our country. Other Met Lab Project buildings on campus were the West Stands, site of the first nuclear fission reactor, New Chemistry, a temporary building that housed plutonium chemistry and processing development under Dr. Glenn Seaborg, Site B, a temporary building that housed uranium fuel rod manufacture and the house physics section, and Eckerd Hall next to and connected to Ryerson. Shoki was thrilled to be working on the ultra-secret Manhattan Project and help in the development of an atomic bomb which could end the war in our favor. As a junior physicist, he felt honored and challenged to be working in the same buildings on the University of Chicago campus as Dr. Enrico Fermi, Harold Urey, Arthur Compton, Farrington Daniels, Leo Silzard, and so many eminent scientific and engineering talent. The Met Lab's first objective was the design and debugging of the X-10 pilot production air-cooled graphite atomic pile being built at Oak Ridge by DuPont for making plutonium-239. Pile was the word first used for what is now called a reactor. The pile used neutrons emitted in the fission of uranium-235 to convert uranium-238 into the new element, plutonium-239. Uranium-238 represents 99.3% and uranium-235 is only 0.7% of the uranium metal. Evening lectures by Dr. Fermi, his young assistant, Dr. Philip Morrison, and others brought Shoki and co-workers up to speed on radiation physics, reactor physics, and health physics. Shoki also took math night courses at the University of Chicago. He limited himself to one course per semester as he worked many nights as well. Uh, my first assignment among many uh, on the project was to design a radiation detection uh, system for placement at the security entrance and exit of the Site B building on the University of Chicago campus. They needed to stop machinists there uh, from taking chunks of metal 
uh, uranium metal home. Uranium metal was being machined at Site B into cylindrical fuel rods that were clad in aluminum for the X-10 pilot plutonium production reactor being built at Oak Ridge. The workers didn't know it was uranium. It was called T-metal, but it was part of a top secret project. Uh, it was very heavy and it was treated like it was very valuable. Also, it threw off lots of sparks when they machined it. So it looked like a great souvenir to take home for a paperweight. Uh, of course, when they got it home, it shed uranium oxide dust, which was poisonous if ingested, and its radioactivity uh, could cause cancer if it breathed into the lungs. They had been warned about the dangers of this metal and its poisonous characteristics, but not specifically about its radioactivity. They had to wear masks when working and change clothes when they came in to work clothes. Then at the end of the day, they had to shower and change their clothes completely, leaving their work clothing at Site B to be laundered before going home each evening. That's what they had to go through. So it was not a very good idea to take uranium home, but the temptation uh, to have a souvenir was too great for some. Uh, we su succeeded in stopping the uranium metal pilfering, and also the equipment stopped people from going home with radioactive belts and other clothing uh, and personal items that unbeknownst to them through their carelessness had become dangerously uh, radioactive. On another assignment, it was my task to try to make improvements, uh, substantial improvements in the function and reliability of laboratory alpha ray detection instruments. Uh, these were needed at many project sites around the country as, for example, at uh, Monsanto's Dayton, Ohio facility, where the development and production of the polonium beryllium A-bomb trigger mechanisms were done. Then there were other sites where uranium and plutonium chemical samples had to be measured, like at MetLab. Some of these sites were Oak Ridge, Los Alamos, Hanford, and St. Louis Mallinckrodt. This alpha ion chamber development work resulted in a U.S. patent that the government applied for and received on my invention. I then was appointed as liaison for Bradley's group in the instruments section to all sites using the equipment uh, designed by our group and in many cases produced on our own small production line. My job was to teach the personnel uh, at these sites uh, how to use, maintain, and service these instruments. One of the reasons I got this liaison job uh, was because of the widespread use of the alpha detection and measurement instruments I had improved. Uh, in this latest liaison capacity, I traveled uh, to most of the major sites, and it was on the occasion of two train trips to Los Alamos that I was invited by Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, along with other Manhattan Project personnel on the train, for wine, cheese, and conversation. It was Dr. Oppenheimer's practice to do this whenever he was on the train. What a thrill it was to meet and be with this erudite but humble and friendly human being, as well as to meet other project personnel. Of course, there was no talk of our work, or where we were coming from, or where we were going. The project resulted in the successful test of an atomic bomb on July 16, 1945. President Truman decided, with the recommendation of a committee, to use the bombs to end the war with a minimum loss of life on both sides. 
so he started his first company in the nucleonics industry. His first company was called Nuclear Chicago Corporation. It was a widely successful company. Among his many accomplishments, he was founder and first president of the Atomic Instrument Manufacturing Association. Aside from a stellar standard line of laboratory quality radiation instruments, portable survey instruments, health monitoring dosimeters, and a film badge service known for the quality and excellent user support, Nuclear Chicago was known for its leading edge technologies. For example, it was the only company to offer a detector for C-14 low energy beta rays where a sample was easily and quickly inserted into the detector. It was called the Q-Gas Geiger Counter. Nuclear Chicago was the first company to offer an instrument designed specifically for the physician to use in his office to perform radioactive iodine uptake studies for a diagnosis of thyroid malfunction. It was called the Mediac. Also, Nuclear Chicago provided an advanced line of survey instruments for uranium prospectors. The smallest utilized earphones rather than a meter to determine radiation intensity. It was called the Super Sniffer and mass marketed by Sears. The company also made the neutron monitoring instrument for the first nuclear submarine, the Nautilus. This device was called NEMO. There were many other instrument firsts, and Nuclear Chicago also became a major worldwide distributor and producer of radioactive isotopes chemical and biochemical compounds. It had the exclusive distribution rights in North and South America and exclusive rights except for the British Queen's Atomic Energy Company elsewhere in the world. This company was sold to GD Cyril Pharmaceutical Company. Shoki left the nucleonics industry and went on to build three other successful technology businesses. Most people think of the atomic bomb only as a weapon of mass destruction. But it is important to know that beyond that, the application of the technology that came, other technology, came from the, the bomb development utilizing radioactive isotopes and chemicals in research, in medicine, in biology, and in industry has made great contributions to humankind. James Asher Shoki, though not a fully educated scientist, nevertheless was able to make a notable contribution to the development of the atomic bomb, as did many others among the 130,000 people who worked on the Manhattan Project. Although not among the most well-known people on the project, his actions and words speak for themselves, loud and clear. Got a package full of wishes A time machine, a magic wand A globe made out of gold No instructions or commandments Laws of gravity or indecisions to uphold Take a chance, grab a piece, help me 